What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. And now that E3 is over, I wanted to talk about somebody who we didn't know was there. A company that we didn't know was there because they kind of were incognito. Konami has been notorious for the last year and a half for doing some pretty screwed up things uh, regarding Kojima, regarding uh, Metal Gear, regarding uh, Silent Hills, regarding the release and basically uh, the destruction of this man's brand. And so... This year at E3, Kojima was able to come out, tell everybody, tell the world, hey man, I'm back. He was able to show off his new game with Norman Reedus, Death Stranding, and Konami couldn't do anything. You know, they stopped him from accepting awards, banned him from award ceremonies, took his name off the packaging of the game for uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, closed his Twitter account, closed Kojima Productions. They did everything they possibly could to destroy this guy. Look at him, he's back, he bounced back. He came back, created something, uh, a vertical slice of what he wants his game, this world to be, showed it to the world, and Konami couldn't do anything but sit back and drink that tea. Anyway, Konami was actually at E3 this year, guys. A lot of people didn't know that. I didn't know that until I came across this article from the perspective of someone who was going to their very first E3 and happened to stumble across the Konami booth. And this is pretty entertaining. I'll drop a link in the description. Konami's state of living death at E3 2016. I wanted to do something special for my first appointment at my first E3. I already got to play a plethora of exciting games from Zelda to Battlefield to Bloodstain to Deus Ex Go to For Honor to Cuphead. I also played Final Fantasy XV. My last appointment needed its own sense of finality, so I made an appointment with Konami, the dead mall of video game publishers. Here's the postmortem. Konami wasn't on the show floor. They were showing their sole game, Pro Evolution Soccer 17, in a meeting room on the upper floor. The space outside the room was quiet and empty. Appropriate for a video game publisher more interested in maintaining spas than making software. Weirdly, the room itself was surprisingly busy. Perhaps artificially so, because it was so small. The PR rep was legitimately surprised and delighted to see me when I arrived, and he saw my name on the list. I almost felt bad for coming solely to mock the company, but, but then I remembered how Silent Hills died so the Metal Gear Solid Pachinko machine could live and was once again filled with righteous blogger snark. The Konami employee directed me to the demo area where most attendees were relaxing, drinking a free beer, and eating free candy and sandwiches while theoretically waiting to check out the new soccer game. It was a good method to lure in apathetic members of the mostly European press. I only heard the sport referred to as football. While waiting for the presentation to start, I checked out a demo of the Pez Manager Companion app for iPad. I tried to take a picture, but I was told not to. The fact that Konami explicitly wants their mobile soccer app kept secret is endlessly hilarious. After a few more strange minutes, the presentation began. I'm no fan of simulation soccer games, and I didn't even stick around to play the demo, but based on the excited British man's proclamations, the latest pass probably won't be horrible. The physics have been reworked, the goalies have more personality, AI adapts to your strategies, and it all looks swell running on the Fox engine the tech behind Metal Gear Solid 5. The perfectly preposterous hashtag is hashtag control reality. During the presentation we saw a chart comparing PES review scores versus FIFA review scores over the years. After a sharp decline about six years ago, PES is back on top and the team behind PES 2017 hopes to continue the trend. Sure, why not? Last year was PES's 20th anniversary and the presenter said the team is now looking forward to the next 20 years of the franchise, but outside of this quaint soccer bubble, it's hard to imagine Konami even existing as a video game publisher 20 years from now since they barely exist as one now. At the very least, they gave me the somber end to the very first E3 I craved, so thanks Konami. This article was written by Jordan Miner, his first E3, and he ended by going to see Konami. Uh, and, and from the sounds of things, they are really, really uh, downsizing and only focusing on PES, which is honestly, quite honestly, a good thing. You know, we got everything good out of Konami that we needed. We got Contra, we got Castlevania, you know, we got Metal Gear. Those are some of the biggest titles. And all those games came through and, and they grew in story and character and world and graphics and, and enjoyment from the community. And then they all died away. And now we got Bloodstained. We got... Death Stranding, we got, you know, other games that have kind of filled uh, the void of what was at Konami. And honestly, I'm I'm pretty excited about their death. Uh, you know, especially after what's been going on with this stupid pachinko machine. 
Thank God that Kojima is working with Norman Reedus. That is really, really a smack in the face to Konami. It's just a funny story that they were actually there and nobody even talked about it because they were basically a non-entity at E3, and it feels good to say that. Hope you guys enjoyed this crazy little news article. It's kind of funny that Konami was there uh, and what they were touting. The only thing they could talk about was their stupid soccer game that nobody wants. And uh, it makes me feel good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up, show support for the channel. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and tell all your friends about me. I'm the Beastly Gamer. I'll see you guys next time.